Dude, how much gas is this? I'm Matt Faulkner, and this is Overtime. This week on Overtime, we're going to talk a little bit about fuel. How do we know how much fuel is in the car? Most of you probably already know that NASCAR cars do not have fuel gauges, but why do they not have fuel gauges? There's a couple reasons for this. One is that a fuel gauge could be considered extra weight. We have ways we can calculate how much fuel is in the car anyway, so why have a gauge? Uh, there really doesn't need to be anything telling the driver when to pit, because we tell him when to pit. There are other thoughts that fuel gauges, you know, regardless of whether you mounted them in one side of the gas tank or fuel cell or the other, um, since we ride on high banks and then back stretches and then slow speeds and fast speeds, the, the sender would never pick up the, the fuel level in the same spot and the gauge would be reading all over the place all the time. There's also a safety concern with a fuel gauge that it would require a, uh, an additional port in the fuel cell, which could be seen as as an unnecessary risk. So that's why the cars do not have fuel gauges. They haven't had them forever that I'm aware. So if there is no gas gauge, how do we know how much gas is in the car or fuel as we more often call it? Uh, basically, we have cans of, of fuel on pit road, the big red cans that you see at the racetrack. And we weigh these cans before we put any of the fuel that's in those cans into the car. So we take the weight of the cans before we then fill the car up with gas on the pit stop and then weigh the cans after. The difference of the amount of gas that was in the cans before and is now in the car and not in the cans is how much fuel is in the car. If you fill the car all the way up, you know exactly how much fuel it took to run the amount of laps that you just ran and you can very accurately calculate the fuel mileage. With a next-gen car, we're not waiting on fuel to fill all the way up. We can change tires on a next-gen car in nine or 10 seconds and it takes probably 13 or 14 to fill the car all the way up with fuel. And we can't afford to wait on pit road for the car to be full. At Talladega this weekend, we actually did. We really needed to, but at a lot of tracks, you've seen us leave as soon as the tires are done and the gas is not all the way full in the car. With the old car, it used to take 13 or 14 seconds to change tires and you could fill the car all the way up, so it wasn't an issue. So there is a new challenge with 2022 next-gen cars that we're not waiting on the fuel to be full and it's become difficult to calculate how much fuel is actually in the car. When you fill the car all the way up with fuel, it's easy to know exactly how much fuel it took to run the amount of laps that you just ran before that pit stop. But when you don't fill the car up all the way, you're not really sure how much of a void in the gas tank is left um, after you left early without filling it up all the way. So this makes it hard to calculate your mileage unless you have a mileage number from a previous run in the race if you don't have that number, you're kind of flying blind to a certain extent. Uh, you can take mileage numbers from practice, which we don't often do. You can take mileage numbers from a previous race, but if you don't fill the car all the way up, it's hard to get an exact number on exactly what mileage you got, and that makes it hard to figure out exactly how far you can go. Now, this, this multiplies exponentially when you do several stops in a row where you don't fill the car all the way up. You do your best to calculate how much gas might be in there, but when you're trying to nail this to the, to the lap and trying not to lose any spots on pit road by waiting, it's tough to know exactly how much gas is in there, and it's, it's, it's a big bet to know if you can actually make it all the way to the end of the race or the end of a run with the amount of fuel you put in the car. Rumor has it that some teams, Chris Gabehart, actually measure the size of the puddle left in the pit stall after the car leaves and calculate that amount of fuel back into their fuel mileage calculator for an even more accurate result. On Sunday, you saw the 11 car run out of fuel with a couple laps to go, and there's a reason for this. When they made their last pit stop, they figured they needed about five seconds of fuel, and they figured that changing right side tires would take that long anyway. So they thought, well, we'll change right side tires. The gas, the gas guy will be plugged the whole time, and when the right side tires are done, we'll have enough fuel, and off, off we go. However, the tire changers did such a good job, they ripped off a two tire stop in 3.7 seconds that the fuel man didn't actually have enough time to get enough fuel in there to run the rest of the race. So even though it was a mistake, in a sense, it was a victory that we can change right side tires faster than we thought was actually possible. And credit to the pit crew for that, the ones changing the tires at least. 
So that's how we know how much fuel is in the car at any point in the race. Like, like we said, there's no fuel level gauge for the driver to know when the pit, but the crew can tell him when he needs a pit. And by measuring the cans before each pit stop and after the pit stop and sometimes a little puddle on the ground, we can get the right amount of fuel in the car at any point to hopefully get to the end of the race and win.